Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the logical operators of ARM assembly. So these are actually going to be working on the underlying bitwise values of values stored in particular registers. So this includes instructions such as AND or exclusive OR, or there's also an equivalent for NOT or negation that we're also going to take a look at. So what these instructions are doing is they're actually looking at the underlying zeros and ones that comprise values stored in particular registers and is performing manipulations on each individual bit based off of the input values. So let's get into that and see exactly what that looks like. So I'm going to open up Notepad++ first. And these are the instructions that we're going to be looking at today. And first of all, I'm going to take you potentially back to your college days and let's construct a truth table so that we know exactly what we're expecting to happen on each individual bit for every instruction. So let's look at AND first. And I'm going to call this AND truth table. So let's say we have a couple values and let's just look at one bit at a time and see what the expected result is going to be. So let's say we have two registers that hold two different values and we're looking at one bit inside of each of those values. So we have one input A, one input B, and then we have our result right here. So let's say we have input is zero, so that's one of the bits. We have another input zero. What is the result going to be? So it's saying this bit and this bit is going to give us a certain result. So what and is going to do is it's going to say if both of my input values are one, then return true, otherwise return false. So both of these input values are actually zero, so neither of them is one, so we're going to get a false value right there. So similarly, if we did zero and one, it's saying zero and one. Well, not both of these are set to one, so the result is still gonna be false. And same goes for input one, input zero, still false. But if we do two inputs of one and one, it's saying this and this, well, that's going to return true since both of our values are one. So that's what the truth table looks like. So let's see how exactly we would do this in ARM assembly. So I'm going to pull up my CPU later and you can feel free to follow along either in your ARM virtual machine or ARM physical machine or in CPU later if it's easier. So let's look at and first. So this is going to be the same mnemonic for the truth table that we, oops, the truth table that we just did over here. So here we have and, which is going to be the mnemonic that we're use, using for this instruction. It's going to store the result in this destination register. It's going to take a second register as an operand, so it's going to look at the bit values stored in this register. It's going to say this is going to be anded with this particular immediate value that we're passing as well. So this and this is going to be stored inside of this destination register right here. So let's see what that looks like. So let's try storing some values in some different registers and practice using the AND instruction. So let me do move into R0. Let's just do in hex 42. So the 0x mean hex, means hex, remember? And then the pound sign means that this is an immediate or constant value. And let's use our AND instruction, which is our new one. We'll do, the result's gonna be stored in the R1 register. Then we need our other operand, which is gonna be R0, which has the hex value 42. And then let's AND the bits in this with another constant. So we'll do pound, 0x for hex, let's just say 15. And I think that looks good, so let's compile and load and see what we get. All right, looks good. So we've got our value 42 in our R0 register, and then the result of R0 and 
in hex 0x15, it's going to be stored inside of the R1 register. So let's step over. Looks like it was all zeros. Okay, let me try doing a different value just to see. I would like to get some results, so let me see. Let's do something else. I don't know, just making something up. So do step over. There we go. So now we've got a value. So this is all in hexadecimal. So this might not make any sense to you. So why don't we convert this to binary so we can see exactly what's happening here. So I'm going to copy this value and I have my hex to binary converter right here. So I'll paste that in. Here's our binary number. Okay. Remember we're in a 32 bit system. So it's 32 digits right there. And let me do, we'll just leave that up, our truth table for reference. Here's our first value. And let's go back to our CPU later. And our second value was in hex 26. So let me just change this to 26. So here's the binary value for that. Okay, let's go bit by bit and see exactly what we would expect our result to be. So I'm just going to pad over here until we get our first one. Uh, since we only have two digits in hex that we were working on. So now let's remember our AND truth table. So we were looking for a case where both of the input bits were one. So let's look right here. One and zero. Not both of these are one. So that's going to give us a false. Zero and one. Not both of these are one, so still false. Similar goes for both of these input zeros. And then still zero and one is false. Now we have one case where we have one and one. Hey, both of these are one, so that's actually going to give us a true. And then same thing, zero and zero is false. So that is actually our resulting number. So this is actually going to be two. So just to show you real quick, I'll do binary to hex if you're trying to do this. And yep, sure enough, we get two. And in our destination register, the value is also two. So it does exactly what we would expect. So hopefully that clears it up exactly what's happening on the underlying bits. So let's move on to another instruction. So we had our and immediate. And just as a kind of side note, you can also do this as a register if you wanted to store, let's say, one value in R0, another value in R1, and then you wanted to do the AND of those two registers. All the instructions today, except for the negation, are going to work on register values as well. So you can do register or immediate. So let's move on to our OR. Or OR, <laughs> if you're familiar with x86 assembly, uh, you don't have the double R, but this one's just kind of funny. I don't know. Okay, so we have our OR immediate. Let's construct our truth table to see what's happening first. So let's go. I'm going to clear this. And let's do our OR truth table. Okay, we have our A and B bits and our resulting bit. So let's say... What are we wanting for OR? We want either one of these bits can be one, uh -oh. and then the result is going to be true. So if we have two ones input, the result is true. If we have a zero and a one, one of those values is still one, so the result's still going to be true. So let's see zero in zero. Well, neither of these bits is one, so the result is going to be false because neither this nor this R1. If we have a 0 and a 1, well, we do have 1, 1, so our result's going to be true. Same goes for the other way around. Result's going to be true. And then if we have two ones, well, we certainly do have a 1 in here, so the result's going to be true. All right, so now let's look at the actual assembly instruction for this and practice using it. So similar to AND, we have our mnemonic OR with our destination register as the first operand. 
The second operand is going to be the input register that we're trying to OR some values of. And then of course we have our constant value that we're ORing against the second operand. So let's open up our CPU later. Let me reset my registers. And let's see, I think we can just leave the values here. I think that's fine. Let me do OR and let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to compile and load. Whoops. Needs two R's, don't forget that. There we go. Okay, so again, we'll move our hex value 42 and our second hex value of 26. And the destination is our R1 register, so that gets the value 66 right there. So let's see what the underlying bits were doing. Actually, I wanted to keep my previous value. So let's just do, there we go. Make sure we have our OR table. But we're going to be looking at the same values as before since I didn't change them. So this was our 42 in hex, and this was our 26 in hex. Okay, and let's pad again since we're in a 32-bit system. Okay. So our value, our resulting value was in hex 66. So let's see how we get that. So we have one or zero. So one, there is one, one in there. So that's going to be true. Zero or one. Still, we've got a one, so that's going to be true as well. But zero or zero, there's no one there. So that's going to be false. And then same goes for the second one. But we have a true right here, since we have a one. Same thing, both of these are one. And then zero. All right, so let's take that and make sure that I did that right and we get 66. There we go. So that's our resulting, where our 66 comes in right here. Okay, so that was our OR. And same thing, you can work on both registers here or you can choose to OR with an immediate value. Let's move on to exclusive OR. So let's pull up our truth table. I'm gonna clear this, but I'll leave our values since we'll still work on them. So let's do exclusive OR truth table. Or if you're familiar with x86 assembly, you would know this as XOR or XOR. But in ARM, we are EOR. So we have our operand A, B, and then our results. So what exclusive OR is going to be doing is it's going to be saying, I want one value to be true and one value to be false. So this and not this is basically what you can think of it as. So let's say we have an input zero and an input zero. Well, neither one of these values is true, even though we have one false value. So our exclusive OR is going to be false. And if we have a zero and a one, hey, we have this and not this. So actually our result is true. Similarly, if we have an input one and zero, we have one one and one zero. So the result's gonna be true. Then if we have one and one, well, there's no zero here, so you can't say this and not this, so the result's actually false. So there we go. That's our truth table for this. Now let's see what it looks like if we're using this as an instruction. So similar formatting right here to the other instructions. Let's just use our exclusive or mnemonic right here. Let me go back to my editor. Reset my registers. Let's just change this to, I'll just write it out, exclusive or. Okay, so let's compile and load that. Step over, we get our 42, and then the result's gonna be stored in our R1 register. And our result is 64. So let's see what this looks like for our bitwise values again. We still have these right here. So let me pad. 
So first of all, we have one and zero, which is this and not this. So that is true. So that holds true for exclusive or. Same thing here, we have one zero and one one. So that's gonna be true. However, here we've got two zeros, so there's no one. So that's gonna be false. Same thing for the next value. But for this one, we have one zero and one one. So that's gonna be true. And the rest of these, we don't have the opposite bit, so these gonna be these are gonna be false. So let's see, what was our result? It was 64. Let's take our result and translate it to hex, make sure we did that right. Sure enough, 64. So we're doing that correct, so that looks good. And let's move on to our last instruction, which is going to be the move and negate. Basically, this is just going to take the input value inside of a register and just flip all of the bits inside of it. So if you had a zero, the result is now going to be one. If you had a one, the result is now going to be zero and so on. So we're not going to do two inputs since this only works on one operand. So let's say we have our... Uh, MVN, which is going to be negation, negation. So if we have our input A, and that is a zero, let's just write our result. It's going to be a one. And if A is a one, the result's going to be zero. So really simple after working with the others. So this will feel nice and easy to you. So let's see, we have our MVN is going to be our mnemonic. We have our destination register, and then we have our input register for which all of the values are going to be flipped. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's reset our register values. So let's leave our value 42 in here. But instead, I'm going to do move and negate. We'll store the destination into the R1 register. So this is going to be the opposite bits of the value stored in R0. And let's pass our R0 register as our second operand. So we'll compile and load. We have our 42 value. And we have um, our results stored inside of R1 register. So let's convert this to binary and see exactly what it looks like. Since you see, we have pretty much the opposite of all of these bits right here. You see, we have all of these Fs now. So we have our 42 value, I think I got rid of that. Let me just show you. Right here. So there's our 42 in hex. And basically what this is gonna do, let me just do this, wherever there was a zero here, there's gonna be a one. So we go one, 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 one. And then we do the opposite of one is zero. Then one, 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 zero, one. Okay, so these are all of the bits actually flipped. So that's why we have all of these Fs here in hexadecimal is because these are now all ones in binary. So let me take this result and just quickly show you. So there we go, F, 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 B, D. And that's exactly what we got. So that is our move and negate operation. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. Today we looked at the logical operators inside of assembly. And we saw how those could modify the underlying bitwise values stored in any particular register that we were working on. And we looked at the truth tables to see what the result would be for two bits input for an AND, an OR, and an exclusive OR operation. And we saw how the move and negate instruction worked on one operand and just flipped all of the bits inside of that and stored that in the destination register. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.